Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you a full guide on Dagger Healed, not only on Dagger Healed but also Dependency Injection, what that actually is and why we should use it, why you should use it. So if you have no idea what that is or if you have a slight idea what that is and you just don't know why you should really implement that and use it in your projects, then this is definitely the right video for you. I know I already have a full Dagger Healed course on my channel, which was really well received, um, I decided to make another one because the one I already have is a little bit outdated. There are some deprecated things and there are just some more cool tricks and tips that I want to show you here in this new course, which I will also refer to on the other old course. So what is dependency injection actually? What many people don't know is that dependency injection counts as a design pattern, just like factory classes, just like um, repositories and stuff like that. Dependency injection is a design pattern. And the purpose behind this design pattern, or what it actually is, what it means and why we use it, is in the end just giving an object its instance variables. That's the whole magic behind dependency injection. So if you have some kind of class here in your project um, that has a constructor and that takes a name for example, and you then create such a class, such an instance, like this, and you pass a name, then you just perform dependency injection. So in this case, the name would be the dependency because the test class depends on this name and you pass it to the test class. So you give an object, you give the test class its instance variables, which is the name here in this case. And what is now the benefit of actually giving an object its instance variables? Let's take a look at the, at the wrong way of doing it and remove the constructor and instead have the name here like this. And then we of course can't create the, pro, uh, the, the, ob the, object, the object like that. Can't even talk anymore. We just create it without any uh, constructor arguments. And the problem of this now is that every single instance of test will have the same name. And that is of course problematic if you want to have different instances with different names. Um, maybe we rename test here just to like person or so to make it a little bit clearer. Um, no, I don't want to rename that. Um, so in, in this case, every single person in our project would have the name Philip. And that is something we probably don't want. However, it's not that obvious in all cases. You might have a view model that depends on a specific repository instance. So then the repository instance would be the dependency of the view model that you inject in the view model. So that you pass to the view model. That is what injection means here actually. And you might wonder why would I need a different type of repository in a view model? And the answer is um, there are plenty of reasons why you would want to have um, a different implementation of a repository in a view model. For example, for testing, that is one common reason that you actually have kind of a fake version of a repository that you pass to the view model. And you want to, rem you want to keep that flexibility that you can pass any type of repository to your view model. And that is just one example, of course. Um, it, it can start with trivial things like this name property, property here, but um, it goes on with repositories in view models with any, any type of class that you inject somewhere, that you pass somewhere. You want to be able to easily um, determine from the outside, from another class, what kind of instance you actually give a specific class like a view model. And the most simple way of actually doing this is called constructor injection. That is what we did here when we pass the name property to the constructor of the person class. Uh, but since this course is about Dagger Hilt, let's talk about that for a moment and what that actually is. Dagger Hilt is a library from Google uh, that makes or that gives us a lot more flexibility and a lot more cool tools we can use when it comes to dependency injection. So originally there was also Dagger 2. I mean, there still is. That is still a, a totally valid version of Dagger that you can use in your projects, which allows you a little bit more freedom. So for some really big projects, you might find that useful to use Dagger 2 instead of Dagger Healed. Um, but then since that library, that Dagger 2 library was super complex, the Google team actually decided to have a more simple version, 
built on top of that Dagger 2 library. And that simple version is Dagger Hilt. So all in all, Dagger Hilt will help us to easily inject our dependencies that won't be via constructor injection, at least not what we will see. Um, we'll use a lot of annotations to define which dependency should go where and it will help us to just have a central place in our code where we manage our dependencies, where we basically tell Dagger Hill, hey, this is how you can create an API interface. This is how you can create a room database. And then Dagger Hill will know how to do that, create that dependency, and allow us to easily inject that wherever we want, like in a view model, for example. And in addition, another big advantage of using Dagger Hill is that it allows us to easily control the lifetime of specific dependencies. So what do I mean with lifetime? For example, the, the easiest example would be having singletons. A singleton is just um, an instance of an object that lives as long as your application does. So there's only a single instance of a specific type of object like your database um, that you use all over the place in your whole project. But there are not only singletons, you might also be able to scope a specific dependency just to your activity so that um, some kind of object you only need in one activity lives as long as that activity does and then it's actually destroyed and the memory is freed up so it can be used for other things. But I would say we just dive into it and implement some very simple typical project setup you have and see how we can make use of Dagger Hill to actually inject some dependencies. And what I want to do is I want to just have a very typical architectural example here of having a repository and then we have a view model in which we use the repository and we have our UI layer in which we actually want to inject a view model. So where we want to have an instance of that. That is what I want to show you and a little bit above that and on top of that. But let's actually start with that and the simple things before we get to the more advanced use cases. So in my main package, I actually want to create another package called data and remote. And here I will just kind of have a very yeah, a dummy retrofit interface, you can say. I actually already included the, de uh, the dependencies for that. Here, retrofit dependencies, um, Dagger Hill dependencies, of course, that is what you need. You will find all of these down below in the on my GitHub. So you can just either copy and paste these or just directly clone this repository. And we have the view model dependency from Jetpack Compose. Uh, which you can use to create an instance of a view model. Then what you also need if you use Dagger Hield is Kotlin capped, so Kotlin annotation processing because Dagger Hield will generate a bunch of classes behind the scenes which will actually perform the um, dependency injection for you. And for that it needs annotation processing. That is actually something very helpful to know. So Dagger Hield is compile time injected, we say. So at compile time, before we launch the app, it is already clear where which dependency goes. Um, if you use a library like Coin, for example, which is a Kotlin dependency injection library, um, that is not true dependency injection, if you want to call it like that. Um, because it is a, called a service locator. Um, it will actually figure out at runtime which dependency goes where, which makes it a little bit slower and Dagger Hield a little bit faster. But yeah, that is something that is very important to know actually the differences. Here we also have a plugin, a, a Gradle plugin for Dagger Hield, which you need to include. And in your build a Gradle project file, you need this class path. But then you're already good to go. We can jump into a remote package and create a dummy API, which I'll just call my API. This won't do anything, won't connect to a real API here. It will just provide a very simple function, do network call, doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, doesn't even need to return something. Let's say that's a get request and it calls the test route, which of course doesn't exist. Then we typically want to use such an API interface in our repository, which we don't have yet. So let's go here, create a domain package in which we actually have another package called repository. That's just a typical package structure you have in, for example, a clean architecture project. And in this domain repository package, we create a new class or rather an interface called my repository and select interface. That is just a common way of abstracting out the functionality, the implementation details of the actual repository, which we're going to write um, right after. Let's say we have our do network call function here as well. And then we can go to our data package and actually write an implementation of this repository in another repository package. Create a new class in that 
call it my repository implementation and make that actually implement this my repository interface. And here we can then override this do network call function in which we actually want to make our API call, which comes from our my API interface. So how do we now get this my API into our repository? Because that is where dependency injection starts. We need to pass this uh, my API instance variable to the object, which is our my repository implementation here. And the way this works is using the constructor again. So we can have our API here, and we simply specify that we need this API here in our repository implementation. And now, how does Dagger Hill actually know that we want to use it here and actually want to kind of delegate passing this API to this repository to Dagger Hilt? And it can't know that by default, of course. That is something we now need to define. And we do that in so-called modules. That is a very common concept, if you want to call it like that, when it comes to dependency injection, that you have multiple modules in your app that um, are kind of containers for specific types of dependencies. So what we're going to create here is an app module. It's called like that because the dependencies in that live as long as the application does. So they are effectively singletons. However, you usually have many more um, modules in a real app if you have more dependencies and you can kind of um, structure these in a way that you have a module for each purpose. So you could have, for example, a broadcast module which contains some kind of broadcasting functionality like um, dealing with web sockets or so. You could have an auth module which provides an authentication repository, maybe like a token service or so um, that you kind of have modules with clear responsibilities. That is my recommendation here at least. Or, or rather, and you have modules um, for specific um, types of scopes. So if you have a specific set of dependencies that you only need in a fragment, that you only need in an activity or a service, then you need to put these in the same module. But you'll see how this works. Let's actually go into our root package and create a DI package standing for dependency injection. And in that we create a new object called app module. Select the object and here we are going to annotate this with app module. As you can see that comes from Dagger. And we need another annotation uh, that is called install in. So with Dagger Hield, we have different so-called components. Here for this app module, since the dependencies we want to kind of provide here, that's how we call it, um, those are all singletons, like our API interface that lives as long as the app does, our repository as well. Um, because of that, we want to install that into the singleton component double colon class. So this component, whatever you choose here, will decide how long the, uh, the dependencies you provide in this module will actually live. If we use the singleton component, that of course means the dependencies will live as long as the, the whole application does. But there are also different types of components, like we have an activity component, and then the dependencies will only live as long as the activity they are actually injected into. We also have things like a view model component, then they only live as long as a view model. We have a retained uh, activity retained component, so that would not destroy them if your screen is actually rotated and the activity is recreated. We have a service component, so if you have a service you can also inject dependencies into that. We're going to use the singleton component here. And in here, we're now going to have these provides functions that I mentioned. So now, since we want to inject our My API interface, Dagger Hilt, of course, needs to somehow know how to create such a retrofit ins instance. And that is what we'll do in the module. So here we're going to have a function provide my API and this function will return in my API instance. So here we can then return and here we define how Dagger Hill can create that instance and that is simply using the retrofit builder. We could add a base URL which you typically want to do. I'll just use any non-existing one here 
And then we can call that, oops, uh, that build and create where we pass our my API class like this. So that's just how we create our specific retrofit instance of my API and return it. And now from this point onwards, Daggerhill knows how to create this type of class. And that will lead to the fact that whenever we kind of request an instance of my API in our project, like we do here in my repository, where we try to inject this here, then Dagger Hilt will look in its modules if it can find such an instance. And if so, it will take that and pass it in the constructor behind the scenes. However, there's one more thing we need to do here. We need to annotate this function with add provides. So just tell Dagger Hilt this function provides a dependency. And we also want to annotate this with add singleton, which just marks this as a singleton. What's now the difference between singleton component and the singleton annotation? Well, this component um, decides about the lifetime of our, of our dependencies in this app module. So all these dependencies will live as long as the application does. This singleton annotation is the so-called scope. So how many of these dependencies we actually have per component. So if we actually annotate this with a singleton, it means we will only have a single instance throughout the whole lifetime of our application. If we wouldn't have this, then every time we inject such an interface, um, so if we would have two repositories and both need this my API, it would create a new instance for both of these repositories, but both instances would live as long as the application does. That's typically something we don't want, which is why we want to add this scope annotation of Singleton to make sure both repositories would get the same instance of my API. Let's now go one step further and see how we can actually now take our repository and inject that into our view model because that is the next layer. First of all, we want to have a view model and I'll just create it here in the root package, um, even though typically I would use a presentation package for that, but let's keep it simple. Um, call that my view model to stay consistent with that naming. Select class, make that inherit from view model. And now we kind of want to have our repository instance here in our view model constructor. So now how do we tell Dagger Healed that we want this repository instance here in our view model? Injecting dependencies into view models is a little bit tricky because um, <clears throat> if, as you maybe know, creating a view model needs a factory. So you need to create a view model factory if you actually have constructor parameters here um, and then tell that factory or rather define how your view model would be created with these constructor arguments. That makes it quite difficult to actually create that behind the scenes in a flexible way. Um, thanks to Dagger Hilt, that is not so difficult because it makes that quite easy. That was a, um, that was a real pain with the uh, Dagger 2 library. But we simply need to annotate this with a Hilt view model to say, hey, we want to inject dependencies using Dagger Hilt. And we want to inject these in the constructor for which we now use the so-called inject annotation. And we also need to specify the constructor keyword, uh, keyword. So now we say, hey, Dagger, please inject all these dependencies we have in our constructor and take a look in your modules and see if you can find these. So now it will go ahead and go ahead and see, okay, we have a my repository interface here. Let's take a look in my modules, which we annotated with module and see if I can find such a my repository. Okay, here is a my API, that's not it. And that's already everything we have. So what we now need to do is we now need to also tell Dagger Hill how to create such a repository implementation. We can do that here in the app module as well, which we do with provides again and singleton provide my repository returns a my repository interface and here we can then simply return a my repository implementation but now you will notice that we actually need an instance of my api to construct this repository and the instance is right here so how do we now get this instance that dagger hill creates here into this repository's constructor and the, the answer is we simply pass it as a parameter. And you will never call these functions here, these provide functions. Those are only called by Dagger behind the scenes. And it will see, okay, 
I actually need in my API instance to create this my repository implementation here. Then it will look for this my API, uh, my API instance and it will find it here and it will then simply uh, pass it here as an argument and create the repository with it. And now since it also knows how to create such a my repository, it will also know how to create such a my view model because it simply needs to inject this my repository here in the view model. So if we now go one layer further, which is the UI layer, and that is the last layer in the activity, and we actually create a view model instance here using val view model is hilt view model. That is also a dependency that comes from dagger hilt, which will scope the view model to the current navigation graph. So whatever graph you have, um, the view model will live as long as the graph is active. My view model. In this case, we don't have a navigation graph, by the way, then it will just scope it to the activity. Um, and yeah, here, when we call this, it will actually create an instance of this my view model, it will inject the repository, it will inject the API into the repository and so on. However, that won't work the way um, we implemented it right now, at least yet. One more thing, or actually two more things we need to do. One more thing is we need to annotate this main activity with Android entry point. That is needed um, because we inject a dependency, the view model here, in an Android component class. An Android component class would be like an activity, a fragment, a service and stuff like that. So things that come from the Android framework. If you want to inject dependencies in that, you need this annotation. Another thing is we need an application class because what actually happens if you want to inject the context in dependencies? Let's say your repository would need the application context um, like this here. How should Dagger Hilt actually know this instance of this context? And you could also not, like if you go to your app module, you couldn't really create this context here. So how do how does Dagger Hilt actually does that? Well, it needs to know your application class to get an instance of that context. Let's create that here. My app, which is an application class. And we simply annotate this with Hilt Android app. And that's already everything we need to do here. We also need to actually register that in our manifest going into the application tag and uh, specifying name, my app. And then going to app module. And now we can simply specify app as an application and pass that as the application context and Dagger Hilt will know that and also pass it behind the scenes. So if we now go to my repository implementation and maybe have an init block here where we get a string resource, for example, because that's what we would need the app context for, which is like the default string resource is the app name. We could say, okay, app context, get string, get string, r string, import r dot app name. And we simply say print line, hello from the repository. The app name is uh, app name. So as soon as this repository uh, instance is created, it will simply print that line. I would say we try this out. We're not done yet with everything I want to show you, but we could already see how that is working. If we take a look here in our logcat and hopefully um, see this, yes, you can see it created this instance behind the scenes and it can properly get the application context. It probably prints our app name so it seems like that is already working perfectly fine. However, one thing or one question I very frequently get is what happens if you actually have a dependency, or actually two dependencies of the same type? How does Dagger Hill know which one it should inject? So let's take a look at app module and let's just provide something very basic like a string. Provides, let's say it's a singleton provides string one, for example, and that just returns hello one. <laughs> Let's call it like that. And we now have another function which provides string two, 
and that provides hello too. So we now have two provides function, uh, functions that both provide a string. And if now, for example, the repository would need a string to be created, let's say we want our hello one string in here, how does Dagger Hill know that it should actually inject this hello one string here into this function and not this hello two string? Because both are of type string and Dagger Hill can't really distinguish between these. And right now, if you would launch this, then uh, this wouldn't work because, well, Dagger Hill can't know that. You can see we get a huge error message. Um, the string is bound multiple times. Luckily, there is a very easy fix and that is using named. So we can basically give this dependency a name of hello one and this one of hello two. And then whenever we inject, um, a, a, a dependency <laughs> we need, we have multiple types of, we simply also provide this annotation of named. Um, named hello one, actually like this. Let's put this on separate lines like this. And now Dagger Hill knows, okay, I actually want this hello one string here for this string. It will take a look which dependency, which provides function has this named hello one annotation. And now it will find that. And if we now relaunch this, the error will simply go away. Yes, it properly launched. Then another thing I want to show you is a little improvement for injecting this repository. Because right now we um, want to actually inject the interface, the abstraction of that repository. And here we just define which implementation we actually want to use for this specific instance. There is an easier way of actually providing um, such abstractions. So if you either have an interface or an abstract class you want to inject, then you can actually get rid of this and create another module in DI. And I'll just call this repository module because it just injects the repository here. We make this a class this time, not an object an abstract class to be specific, annotate it with module again, and install in singleton component. And the difference here will be that we are going to have an abstract function, which is going to be called bind my repository. So that is a different way of actually providing a dependency. So this time it's actually not called provide, this time it's called bind we, so we bind this uh, dependency and that all, always works if you have, if you want to provide an interface or an abstract class, as I said. Here in the, in the parameters, we now specify the actual implementation type we want to inject, which is my repository implementation. And it then returns the interface. And we don't need any function body here because it's an abstract function. But what we need to do is we need to annotate it with binds and singleton again. And the benefit of this is that Dagger Hill will simply just generate a little bit less code for um, yeah, injecting such interfaces or abstract classes than if you would have that as a provides function, which are functionality wise equivalent, but I prefer it this way actually of injecting um, interfaces and abstract classes. Right now, this won't work. So if we launch this, you will notice an error message that um, my repository implementation cannot be provided without an inject constructor or an provides annotated method. That's a very common error you get with Dagger Hield. So what does that mean? Dagger Hield can't find or doesn't know how to create the uh, my repository implementation in this case, because there is no provides function. We can very easily fix this by going to my repository implementation and saying inject constructor. So that is an alternative way of actually injecting dependencies, um, simply annotating the constructor with add inject. And as, as long as Dagger Hill knows how it can create these dependencies in the constructor, it will also automatically know how to create this repository implementation, of course. So whenever any type of class in your app has an inject constructor, you don't need any provides function for that. And here in this case, in our repository module, this bind function just makes sure that 
this specific impl implementation is chosen whenever we try to inject this abstraction, like we do in our view model here. So here we don't have my repository implementation. No, we actually use the interface, the abstraction, what you should always do with these things. Then another common issue you will face is, let's say you have a service, like my service, and you want to inject a dependency into such a service that runs in the background. Um, we of course need to annotate this with Android entry point, as I said, because the service is an Android component class. Let's um, just return null here in onbind. And let's say we need our repository interface here. Now, usually you would do it like this. You have an inject constructor, import inject, and you would simply have your repository in here. However, with the services, for example, that does not work because you can't give a service a constructor. How can we then still get our repository in the service? Well, the answer is using field injection. That is also a thing that we can simply have late init variables like this with um, this inject annotation. Then it will also just inject the dependency into this field variable. It needs to be public, can be private, but it will work just fine. And then here in on create, after super, that is actually where the injection happens here in super on create. After that, you can then simply use your repository, do the network call and whatever without needing to initialize that on your own because Dagger Hilt will already do that. And one last thing, a uh, very useful thing that I want to show you is lazy injection. What is lazy injection? That is injecting a dependency um, and kind of delaying the creation of the object, you can say. So let's take a look in our view model. What we can now do is we can surround this my repository with a lazy and make sure to import the lazy from dagger like this. And what this will lead to is that it will take a look at my repository, which we actually um, provide here. And that my repository needs my API and the app context. And my API will be constructed here. Normally, a dependency is constructed as soon as we inject it. However, with a lazy, it is not directly created when we inject it. Instead, it's then, uh, it is then created when we first use it. So if we now take a look and launch our app and take a look in Logcat, then we shouldn't be able to see this log here because the repository implementation is not created at this point. If we now go to the view model and let's say we have an init block here and actually do something with the repository, which we can do with repository get that now comes from lazy and returns a my repository, then at this point where we call get, it will actually, uh, it will actually be created. So I launched this and now you can see it will print this line again. When is this useful to have lazy um, injection? Well, for example, you have maybe kind of an API that takes an interceptor that um, just authenticates your requests and you have that interceptor needs maybe an authentication token, but the token is not known at compile time. Instead, it's known when the user has successfully logged in. So you might get that token from your preferences, but you actually want to delay getting that until you actually know that the user is logged in. That is one very common use case of using lazy injection. And that is already like 95 to 99%, I would say, of what you really need to know about Dagger Hilt. This video really covered it all. Um, I hope this was helpful for you and you know, now know how to use it in your projects. Um, I really recommend to have some kind of project where you practice that, practice using it, and then you will quickly understand that Dagger Hilt is really not um, like super difficult to, to use. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.